beauty and luster of well-kept furniture and well-kept wood. And I've come today to the workshop of Eli Rios. Hi, Eli. Hello, Martha. Welcome. I hope that today you can teach me and all our viewers how to take care of our furniture. How did you learn how to do all of this? Well, most of my learning came from my parents. My father was a carpenter. My uncle was a restorer. And uh, I've learned quite a bit from experience also. I worked in many other shops. And now currently I teach at FIT. And I teach uh, an applied chemistry course of historic materials. Oh, and here the students get a chance to do their apprenticeships and learn on actual pieces. I'd love to learn as much as I can. Well, it'd be my pleasure to show Thank you. you. Come on in. Okay. I'll show you around. Well, Eli, this table looks like it's really in disrepair. The top has white uh, marks on it, scratches, and it looks faded to me. Is it a good table? It is a good table, even though it looks like a mess. This is a Pembroke table, about 1815, Regency English, made out of mahogany. Part of the value of the piece is all of the distress that you see here. Yes. And there's part of the wax and dirt on top that can be removed without removing the original or the existing finish. To strip the table is a no-no if it's a fine antique. Stripping is a bad word. Okay. Finishing is one of the worst words you can use. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to clean it with mineral spirits, which only removes the old dirt and wax, and then uh, at the same time conserve the finish that's below it. Shellac is what's on this piece, okay. and that's what we're going to recondition it with when we clean it. Okay. So what do we do? Well, the first part of it is uh, that we get some gloves and put them on. Oh, you use my favorite yeah, we, surgeon's gloves. We have to use gloves in order to protect ourselves. We take a little bit of mineral spirits, just put a little bit on some cheesecloth, and just you know, wipe it on there. What is mineral spirits? In the hardware store, they call it paint thinner. Already you begin to see that there is color underneath, oh. but even a better color there if you can see yes. that. These areas that you see here are areas where the fish is absolutely gone. See how much darker it is then? Yes. Okay, so we're going to try to achieve it. Let's try this section here. Now, sometimes to speed up that process, even though it's a less drastic process we use, we use very fine 4 0 steel wool. And we use that sort of to break up the dirt. And more of the dirt yes, begins to come sure off there. Is. And right now, all that's coming off here is all the dirt and wax. And the only thing that will be left is the any part of the old finish that's on there, which we might want to call original, but sometimes the piece has been done at least once. Uh, and in this case here, we have plenty of the old finish left. Then you see all these other wonderful marks that are here. Yeah, and you want those. We want that, because that's the history of this piece. That's it's all the in, the, in those marks and, and the finish. So when you look at a piece and you see all that, if you know and know that the finish can be restored, it's best to save it and learn how to clean it. And this is the safest way to clean it. The next thing that we do is that we're going to take off the residue of any mineral spirits and old waxes on the oh, surface. So, okay, so that's important. And that's too. a very light cleaning. The thing is we have to be very careful because we know this is shellac, and shellac will dissolve with alcohol. So what we're going to do now is carefully just go over this with denatured alcohol. And we're going to be very careful to like this. It's cleaning nicely. Oh, so wow. Go ahead. This process we're using is all for demonstration purposes only. The pieces do take a lot longer to do than the time that we're going to spend to demonstrate the steps here. So in actual cleaning, it takes another 20 hours to polish this piece up. If we start going against the grain or go a little too wet, then you'll have marks. What's getting shiny there yeah. is the old shellac finish that was on there a long time ago. Right. So we're, you're getting very clean. And this rag keeps picking up dirt. Yeah, that's right. We need to clean over here a little bit. And then you could actually lift up that other one and look at the difference. Look at that. Amazing. Okay. So much better. This is called reconditioning the existing finish. Excellent. What we're going to do next is called, or referred to as, French polishing and shellac. That That's I'm very curious about because okay. lots of my furniture has French polish mm -hmm. on it, and I want to know how to do that. Well, there's two things we have to know. First, how to make a pad. Okay. And the pad is done, again, with, with cheesecloth. All right? You can take that. And I'll take this one. It's a big, it big rectangle of cheesecloth. Yeah. Okay. Fold it in half, and we fold it in half again. Once more. Now, this is the tricky part. Okay. Okay, we have to roll it into a hand. This. Let's see. Oh, okay. 
clearly making it a very flat piece. It actually looks, it has a little point on it. Okay. That's pretty good. So now we have our pad, and the first thing we're going to do is prime it with denatured alcohol. I'm going to put some on the inside. Now work it throughout the pad until it's, feel you it. feel it. Until yeah. you feel that it it's completely saturated. When we start polishing a piece, first thing we do is make believe this is like an airplane coming in and going off the piece. And we have to slightly overlap each stroke. All right. This is the first one. See it? And mm -hmm. this is the second one. And you always come down, all the way down. You're going to notice that the finish right away is going to start exposing itself, even though we're not applying any shellac to the surface yet. So we're right now actually preparing the surface for polishing. Now we'll add a little shellac to it. Shellac is a natural resin. It's made here. It's made from flake shellac. Uh, it comes from India, and it, uh, it comes from a lac a bug, which is on a lac tree. Lac bugs exude a substance on the uh, branches of the tree, and uh, they, this is harvested, and that's heated and processed, and that's how we get the different types of shellac. So what we buy are the flakes, the dry flakes, and here is where we mix it with denatured alcohol. We make shellac in order to do French polishing. So you put this shellac on the inside of your pad. Inside, and work it through till you see it. Just watch out for the Oh, yes. <laughs> It's, it's, it might be a little tacky later on, but that's what happens. Turn the pad inside out. They come in, they go out, they come in, and go out. Yep. And already you begin to see the finish. Now the shellac, what it does is, besides enhancing the color, it enhances the clarity. If a man, like Elias, who's going to finish this table for me today, works on this, he's going to polish this for an hour or two. And in an hour or two doing this, I think you, you can add about 500 coats. Oh, it's no brush? No. We only use the brush on carved chairs when we have to. There you go. You see? That's only it's a short... It's amazing. It's so, really altering the appearance of this table. But this spot here and these spots here are the ones that will disappear when Elias continues polishing this. So it'll take many, many more I'll hours than what many we've hours, done. Many more coats. And when it comes back, they'll be virtually gone. We'll come back next week to see 